my my thing is not charging. Come on. Um, is that correct? Yes, we do. Okay. The only one we're waiting for is Roy, who's having some technical difficulties. Okay. So. All righty. And um, we're expecting presentations by Karen Paulus from Car Springs Park and Rec, and also, I believe, Kurt Schroeder. Um, yeah, I know. I've seen um, Karen on here. Do you want me to go ahead and bring them both over, or do you want to wait till? Um, Let's, let's let let's let Roy get in place for in first, and then we'll go ahead and bring them in. Very good, thank you. See Roy's present yep. now. Sorry. Okay. Glad you made it on, Roy. Okay, and uh, looks like uh, Denise doesn't have her video on. I believe uh, Councillor Woolbrook is. Uh, on her way back from Denver, so she's talking to us by phone, I believe, or listening by phone. Okay. Okay, we see Denise is there. Okay, good. All right. Well, let's we'll go ahead and get started. Then I'll call this uh, I mean, a work session meeting in the council for June eleventh, twenty twenty, to order. Uh, if the city clerk could go ahead and call the roll, please. Yes. Councilor is Judith Chandler. Present. Steve Bremner. Here. John Shada? Here. Susan Wolbrook? Here. Julie Wolf? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Nancy Fortune? Present. And Mayor John Graham? Here. Okay, we have all Thank of you. In attendance. All here. Okay, good. Um, tonight, of course, we have uh, one discussion item, that's the, uh, uh, the incline management plan during the COVID-19 virus and uh, related uh, concerns. Um, I think tonight what we want to do really, I think you, as you all know, as we all acknowledge, this is primarily um, an opportunity for Colorado Springs, uh, essentially Colorado Springs Park and Rec Department to present their um, their issues regarding this. Uh, we did make our presentation or our staff made a presentation uh, May the 26th, um, which council uh, supported unanimously and gave direction to, to city staff to go ahead and pursue it. Um, since then, we found out that city city of Colorado Springs Parks Department uh, had some um, concerns about it. So tonight, uh, the focus is to give them a chance to put their ideas forward, and we can discuss this a bit. I think since uh, I believe it's anticipated that uh, we'll want to meet and discuss this um, potentially in an executive session. I think uh, council members should sort of uh, your participation should be guided by the idea that we'll we'll want to uh, meet and, and discuss this amongst ourselves as well. So I think uh, to have clarifying questions and have a good understanding of Colorado Springs position and understand the areas where we may not uh, agree, it would be useful to have that, but uh, I think we should try and leave the motions out of this 
in uh, with with the thought that we'll have the opportunity to uh, to discuss it further in greater detail. So with that said, um, uh, City Clerk Judy Morgan, if you would uh, bring in the first presenter, I don't know if that's going to be Karen or Kurt. I can bring them both over if that works. Yeah, that would be great. Welcome to TV land. Welcome to Manitou. Hi. Um, okay, uh, Karen, Kurt, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we, we're really quite interested in, in hearing what you have to say. Um, currently, you're both muted, so um, who would like to start? If you could raise your hand and unmute your microphone. Okay, Karen, you want to go ahead and start? Uh, good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor Graham. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem um, Fortune and Honorable Members of City Council. Um, I, I am Karen Pallas. I'm the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services Director for the City of Colorado Springs. And I want to first uh, and foremost thank you all for putting together this uh, special meeting. I know these are not easy. Um, this is our third council meeting uh, this week uh, as well. And so I just want to thank you for your time and uh, being willing to host this at a separate time in lieu of your regular meeting. So um, what I'd like to do um, this evening is just kind of walk you through the information um, as one of the three owners of the incline and all and the properties and such in and around there. Um, we wanted to share with you uh, our proposal uh, based on the conversations and continued follow up we've had with your team in Manitou. I wanna thank uh, Denise and Roy and uh, Dole, uh, we uh, put a lot of time and effort into uh, working through some things over this last uh, couple of weeks, and uh, I appreciate that time and, and that attention uh, to what we have to share this evening. So I want to be very clear up front. Um, we are very interested in requesting um, that the City of Manitou consider at their uh, next regular meeting, if you all would consider um, removing the Manitou incline uh, from your emergency declaration of March 17th. And so that's what we are proposing and, and uh, requesting from you all. And then we'll share with you kind of what we heard from the emergency declaration and then how um, we would like to move forward with uh, your support in that effort. So if um, there aren't any questions up front, be happy to walk through that. Um, I'm going to be the primary presenter, and then Kurt's my my uh, going to come in with any stats and, and info that we might need, and uh, in the additional dialogue. Any questions at this point, Council? I, I think not. Karen, why don't you go ahead and get started? Okay. Does um, Roy, do you have the PowerPoint, or am I going to share my screen? I actually have it as well, but if you'd like to go ahead and share a screen, that's that's fine as well. Okay, let me see if I can. Well, let me do that. No, oh, it's not giving me that option. So, um, Judy, if you can go ahead and share, and then I can let you know when we um, are ready to move through. That'll work. Thank you, Judy. Appreciate that. Sorry that wasn't working on my end. We've had some technical difficulties over uh, here today with some uh, firewall issues. So thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are here to uh, request uh, the opportunity to uh, reopen the incline under uh, our COVID-19. And we are following in line with what's considered the public health order and the current one that is safer at home and in the vast great outdoors. And uh, what I want to share with you all going back, hang on. Oh, you got it, Judy? <laughs> it's That's moving around. Sure. But I wanted to go back to just to be clear what we're addressing based on what was identified um, related to COVID and why the incline was closed. Um, in item number six from the March uh, 17th, you all stated that um, the concern about Manitou incline being an attractive nuisance 
and a health hazard. And then you provided uh, information around attendance and visitors um, as an issue. So again, concerns for the number of users, understood. Um, you also mentioned um, concern regarding the free shuttle buses and that they were um, often packed to capacity during transit from parking areas. So that was number two. And then the third item that you identified was use of the incline um, was around restroom facilities. And so I'll address those three issues as they were identified as part of the closure um, due to COVID. And so that's what we're prepared to share with you uh, this evening. Go ahead, Judy, to the first slide. All right, so I'm gonna address the health and safety issues first. I think um, council heard quite a bit of this already um, from your team in Manitou and appreciate uh, uh, Roy and, and Dole and uh, Kurt working through um, a lot of that information previously. So um, you have restrooms. It was deemed at your last meeting that there's a sufficient number of facilities. Uh, we offered um, to up the maintenance to six times a week and we'll continue to monitor those facilities as we have done in the past and as we continue to do at many of our uh, locations across the city of Colorado Springs. And then we have also identified um, some additional hand washing stations to be added to that area. Um, so that will allow for sufficient um, restroom area at the base of the incline at this time. We will also follow all El Paso County health guidelines, which is what we've been doing since the pandemic started. We have been working very closely with our health department through all of the um, closures, openings and such um, throughout all of the parks facilities here in Colorado Springs, um, as well as our properties that are outside of our jurisdiction. Um, that particular guideline right now is again staying home if you're sick. You know, we've encouraged that. We've uh, done a lot of videos and information around that. Maintaining that phys a physical distance of six feet, and we changed our signage from social distancing to physical distancing. So folks really started to understand what that meant. Um, but again, if you're with your family now, and now you can do under 10, right, is the latest rules um, can be together, but we're encouraging those folks still to maintain a physical distance of six feet. And we are encouraging masks. This is the one thing that we did uh, hear back from some of the folks um, in the community is they were worried that we were going to require masks to go up the incline and we said absolutely not. The, the incline is challenging enough, but we do encourage them to have those masks as you're going down because the bar trail is very narrow and we wanna make sure folks are protecting themselves just as we are encouraging them to do so in all of our other uh, hundreds and hundreds of miles of trails throughout our park system. And then last but not least on the guidelines, we've done this in, from the beginning, but we've encouraged folks to bring their own water, that there is not water, um, drinking water available. So please bring your own water and also bring your own hand sanitizer. And we've seen great compliance in and around that, especially with a lot of our folks around playgrounds and things that they're now open. And then the last item on here that's related to um, the comments regarding the shuttle and the shuttle being uh, full or over capacity. And so we've stated that the shuttle protocol based on our conversations with our transit department is they would follow con a consistent current transit um, requirements that they have. However, we did explore with them, and I think Roy talked to Brian Vitulli in transit as well, and they were willing to modify, if need be, um, any protocols that Manitou felt comfortable with since the shuttle um, currently um, has the contract with you all directly. So that is open for um, interpretation in terms of what you all feel comfortable with if you um, when you bring the shuttles back and I know there's been some dialogue about that and I'm hoping to hear a little bit of that maybe at the end of this tonight because I think folks are going to want to know um, what the status of that transportation may be. So those are the things related to the health and safety. Judy if we could go to the next slide. And not forwarding. <laughs> Don't you love tech? It's been so much fun to do all these things for I know, by Zoom. I'm not sure why it's it's not. Let me just do that. There we go. There you go. 
So the next area, oh, thank you, Judy, appreciate that. Um, the next area um, falls under operational modifications. And so uh, we wanted to offer up after, um, again, additional conversations with the City of Manitou team um, in terms of how do we fall in line with guidelines that are outli outlined by the public health order. And again, that is the one identified under safer at home and in the vast great outdoors. Our governor has been very um, outspoken about being outside is the best place to be during COVID-19. And we've seen that in a lot of our facilities and folks are really starting to explore. There is currently, and there has not been any limitations on this order or any of the previous order as it relates to trails. So that's the good news. Um, but we have, um, uh, followed up with and verified with our El Paso County Health Department and they are comfortable what we what we have uh, provided for you all tonight and again um, encouraging all of us following the rules identified and outlined by El Paso County Health. So again from the state you have those rules and procedures and again reinforcing what's happening locally and that has been our compliance factor we've worked very closely with all of our facilities not just the ones that are open but the ones that are closed working very closely with el paso county health to make sure we are modifying any operational plans that they require that we're meeting those standards and that we're moving forward in a very safe and healthy um, direction in terms of making sure our community stays safe and is protected from um, the COVID-19 and we would like the same for Manitou. I understand um, it was very concerning, a small community. I know uh, not only your concerns, but then seeing what was happening in some of the mountain towns as well, very concerns with visitors. So I understand and respect that. And I think we've got a way to um, move forward that aligns with some of the things that were presented to you previously and things that uh, we can handle as the owner um, of the property. Um, the next area was a reservation system for incliners. Um, my concern at the last um, presentation is that uh, my understanding was around parking and parking purviews. And so we've had a lot of dialogue um, with that between uh, uh, the City of Colorado Springs staff and the City of Manitou staff over the last uh, few weeks. And so um, we host different uh, programs and activities throughout our system. This is not um, new to us. This is what we do. Um, we've got North and South Slope um, up on a similar system already with Pikes Peak America's Mountain, one of our properties um, that we operate under a special use permit. We run hundreds and hundreds of programs across the, the city of Colorado Springs. And so um, we are proposing that we do an interim reservation system um, during this time of COVID and it would be hosted on our city of Colorado Springs incline page. Um, that's where we'll host all of that information and uh, reservation capabilities on that. Um, the initial proposal aligns with what City of Manitou staff had recommended. We were willing to work with that, thought that was a very fair and reasonable start and to work through um, those participants. It was 45 participants at a 30 minute increment. Uh, so we're happy to identify that and work with that. We are proposing that the timing right now be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for staffing purposes and that um, wristbands will be issued. And so I've got one on, we do these every day, but um, for as our folks as they're coming into the building, but we will be issuing wristbands, we'll be capturing names and information and such. And so that would be the uh, interim reservation um, plan as is proposed with those initial 45 um, participants. And then um, as we evaluate, as we see how things are working and understanding um, how folks are following those policies and, and such, um, we'll work with, we're happy to work with your team and talk through um, what's happening there and giving some feedback. So um, Judy, if you go to page four, next one. Additional operational modifications, uh, enforcement, we contract typically with El Paso County Sheriff's Office. And so they have been very helpful to us in the past in terms of a lot of the uh, reinforcement of rules and uh, procedures, and uh, this would be no different. And then uh, we've identified some incline attendance during the COVID-19 that would help administer the program, have ca help capture information, um, that we're looking for and some data. 
Um, one of the key parts of this proposal and one that the health department has been um, very supportive of in terms of contact tracing. One of the things you've seen if, as the restaurants have been reopening, they're responsible for collecting a name and information from at least one individual per uh, party so that if and when, if you listen to our governor, it's more like when someone contracts the disease that they are able to be able to communicate with those folks. And so um, with our reservation system in place, if we were notified that someone had been on the incline and had contracted uh, the disease, we'd be able to let those folks know, um, not who, but just the fact that they may have been exposed and be able to communicate with them. That will help us as well communicate with El Paso County Health one of our partners in making sure that they're aware and we're following within uh, their guidelines. Um, reporting was requested um, from your team in Manitou and so we were happy to provide um, incremental updates as requested. So if you need something weekly initially and then you need something you know, less frequently because you've had enough of the incline, you know, we're happy to provide that information and make that uh, information available. All right, Judy, go on to the next one. Messaging, one of the things that we spent a lot of time um, with over the last two meetings that we had with your Manitou team was how to um, move forward with some collaborative communications. I wanna thank your communications team in Manitou for the collaborative news release that went out last night. I think that was very helpful and uh, was I got a lot of positive responses from that. So I appreciate that support and that uh, team effort. Uh, we also talked a lot about social media and our safety videos. We have a lot of safety videos we've done in terms of the incline as well as any of our trails and trail use. And so we'd be happy to continue on with those efforts and make those available to Manitou if they so chose to um, utilize them. And then we spent quite a bit of time about how to provide links to City of Manitou Springs parking areas and how to communicate uh, that as well of what parking reservations and or fees that may be applied to understand. Uh, there'll be more dialogue on that very soon and hopefully a really soon implementation. And I think that'll be great information for us to be able to share with incline users and bar users um, and any of the others that are up in that um, particular corridor so that uh, the information that you all want them to see first, we can include that in terms of that reservation system and uh, let folks know um, what's available, where to park, and uh, what's going on in the community. Go ahead to the next one, Judy. Proposal um, as presented, I wanted to share with you and I had let um, your team know this as well. Um, one of the things we strive for in terms of Colorado Springs is communication with our advocates and with our friends groups to make sure what's moving forward. Um, we get good feedback from that or if there's anything we need to um, be concerned with. And so we have provided this uh, information to not only our Colorado Springs administration, but city council um, to move forward with this. We reached out to Colorado Springs Utilities and the United States Forest Service in terms of this proposal, all of which are supportive of what we have presented here or what we're pre presenting to you all this evening. Um, we also presented to our Parks, Recreation, Cultural Services Advisory Board this morning uh, this information. I will say they are supportive of moving forward and opening the incline. However, several members did have caveats in the terms that this is an interim solution and any permanent solution would go through the significant public process like we would do with a master and management plan. So there was a lot of conversation around having guardrails on uh, what this process is as it relates to COVID. And so I assured them that I would share this information um, with you all, let you know um, what their thoughts were, but that you were supportive and they were supportive of the proposal as it's presented. We also shared this information with the Trails and Open Space Coalition um, to make sure that they would align with this proposal as presented in the interim fashion, as well as Incline Friends. Um, we've also spoken with the Pikes Peak Outdoor Recreation Alliance around, um, again, their advisory board um, understanding um, this presentation under the COVID guidelines. And then I was really pleased, I think the collaborative uh, communication that went out last night and the initial proposal being shared with the community, um, we got very positive social media. And for those of you who monitor comments and 
and things, uh, very often you will note that that's not always the case. And so I was really um, cautiously optimistic that we'd get good feedback from the community. And uh, based on our communications folks uh, monitoring those comments, we've gotten a, a lot of good positive feedback for the proposal. I will say the one concern that we did receive was concern about having to wear a mask to go up the incline. And we've assured that individual that's not what we're, that's not what we would be requiring, but we would recommend um, they have that mask with them, especially on the descent as it relates to bar trail to make sure our bar folks that are coming up and those that are coming down um, can safely pass one another as we've encouraged folks to do elsewhere in our park system. And the next item, there we go. So path to opening, um, I know you have to take this through to your regular meeting and so we would be requesting that um, this be included in your June 16th meeting. Um, I did identify a potential opening date of June 17th, so the following day, but my, my staff has encouraged me to give them a few more days um, because we wanna make sure we've got everything up and running and, and working. And uh, I also wanted to, you know, a little time too to understand if there's uh, any minor modifications or things that we need to consider and think about. So I really appreciate um, the opportunity to share this with you all. And my last slide, Judy, if you'll move forward is uh, any questions, a beautiful picture of the uh, skyline below the incline. Um, and I just wanna thank you all. I wanna thank again, Dole and, and Roy and Denise uh, for their efforts and uh, for working through the complexities of the incline between ownership and um, you know, with multiple owners, it's a very challenging uh, dynamic. It's also challenging to understand everybody's rules and guidelines and, and know how those work and what, um, what it takes to, to implement. And so I'm appreciative of seeing, I, I understand we're not doing the parking presentation uh, this evening, but I was um, appreciative of seeing what Roy had put together. And uh, I look forward to hearing more about that, especially as it relates around the bar lot and uh, the shuttle and then what your plans are around Hiawatha. I think the community is very interested in seeing some of those things move forward. I know those are outside of COVID and I'm here only for COVID. So it, I know those are outside of that, but I look forward to uh, hearing more as you all move forward. Okay. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you. Um, that was very helpful. Um, I don't know if Kurt's here mainly answered questions or if he has comments he'd like to contribute at this time. You know, Kurt's been very involved. You can pass it. I'll, I'll be here to answer questions, Mayor, with Karen as need be. As understood. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I see Mayor Pro Tem Fortune has her hand raised up. Uh, yeah. Answer the floor. Great. Thank you. Um, I uh, There's stuff in here that I like, but there remain a lot of unanswered questions. And um, since the, our council just got this briefing um, within the hour, um, I was wondering if we could just submit our questions to Roy and have him get them all answered. As, as I am fond of saying, as others are fond of saying, the devil's in the details. And um, I, I do have a lot of detailed questions or issues that I'd, I'd like to answer, but I don't know if tonight is the best time to do that. I'd rather put some thought into it, I think. Okay. Um. Councillor Wolf, you're muted, Julie. Julie, you're muted. Okay. Uh, when did this packet get sent to Manitou? I think uh, we Not received asking, a slide. Not uh, Karen or Kurt. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, um, I want to know when they sent it to us. Wolf, we provided um, the information uh, last Friday after our meeting. And then I followed up with our presentation, full presentation information on uh, Tuesday and sent that to all the owners along with Manitou for uh, review and comment and feedback. And I'd be happy to forward that email to you if you'd like. So just to clarify then, you provided this specific eight slide PowerPoint to Manitou on Tuesday? Yes, ma'am. Um, other council members, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Fortune had uh, mentioned uh, the idea of submitting emails. Uh, 
was going to ask to, for a response on that. Councillor Chandler, I see you had your hand up. You're muted. Judith, you're muted. Great. Thank you. I would just like to know when the press release was written, who was involved in writing that press release, and when it was decided that that was going to be released. Um, we worked with um, your folks in um, your communications. My communications team worked with your communications team. We put our information uh, together and managed to put their information together, and then it was blessed by your, your folks as well as ours. Uh, which folks was that blessed by? Um, is it, Denise, can you answer your communications person's name? I'm sorry, uh, Vanessa handled it from my end. Yes, Alex was putting it together. Roy Dole and I looked at it, and um, I'm the one who said it's okay. So it's me. And I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm I'm still unclear as to when that was all put together and when it was set out, sent last out, minute, and when last minute yesterday, all day yesterday. I don't know what time it was sent out because I did not send it. Okay, but it was yesterday. Yeah. Yes, it was uh, late that uh, evening um, in terms of getting that out to the media. I have many other questions and concerns, but I will reserve all of my questions and concerns for an executive session. Okay. Um, Councillor, Councillor Chandler, I was going to ask you, how do you feel about submitting uh, questions as emails to, uh, to Roy to let him sort that out? Um, I, I'll, I'll discuss that with you um, after this meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have other comments from council members? Uh, Councillor Wolf. Thank you. Um, this is a question for Karen. Um, Karen, did you attend any meetings prior to today with uh, any Manitou staff? And if so, can you tell us when and who? Um, yes, we um, had several meetings uh, last week each day. Um, most of us were all in attendance between Kurt and I and my team and Denise and Roy um, and Dole. Um, um, from your team. And as part of your proposal, um, uh, if we decide that we're going to resume using the shuttle this summer, who do you suggest should pay for it? Well, currently the contract that you all have is with our transit services. And so um, that is uh, funded right now. I believe you're paying for the incline and Denise, correct me if I'm wrong, but the incline shuttle is being paid by the bar lot funds and the city of Colorado Springs supports additionally um, your, I think it's 30, the 33 one as well. So um, Kurt, you've got all that info. You want to, I'm sorry, I don't have all that top of my head. The bar lot funds do not cover the entire shuttle. Right, but uh, incline, it covers the incline shuttle. It doesn't cover all of your shuttles. No, it does not cover the entire incline shuttle of our cost. Sure, Route 33 is the route that takes, uh, that goes from uh, Hiawatha up through Manitou on Manitou Boulevard to Ruxton and then on to the incline. Um, the costs for that, and I'm looking for that right now. Um, My apologies. Um, is well, I still haven't found the right one. Um, if you give me just a second. I apologize. Um, of that, um, uh, Route 33 uh, runs from 6, which is the one going to the incline, runs from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, January through April, uh, uh, April and October through December. Um, the city uh, absorbs $160,000 of that cost, and the city of Manitou absorbs $204,000 of that cost, I believe is the right number. 
So did I hear this right? January through April, October through December. So there's, where, what about the summer? Yeah, and then the summer months. And the summer months as the contract's written is what is the cost absorbed by the city of Manitou. But what is the cost for the summer months? Do you know that? I don't. Yeah, I believe it's $204,000. I still haven't put my finger on it. Oh, that. okay. Yeah. I misunderstood. I thought you meant 204000 was how much Manitou pays for the January through April and the October through December. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, the so city of Colorado Springs pays for the shoulder months, I guess you'd say, and that's $160,000, whereas the city of Manitou picks up the uh, cost as per the contract for the summer months, um, May through September, I believe, and it's right at $204,000. Thank you so much. And um, under your proposal, who should pay for the search and rescue? Um, well, per, per the oh, current management plan, uh, that is something that is uh, relegated to the city of Manitou. How much do you think we spend on that? Do you have any information? I, I don't know. Okay, I don't either. I just thought I would, I <laughs> I would ask you. Um, and how did you folks come up with the proposal about the six times a week cleaning the porta potties? Can you tell me what formula you used or how that was arrived at? Sure. Currently, we're uh, doing it three times a week. And with the requests that came through and we understood that was a concern, we went to six times a week. Our vendor uh, indicated that Sunday's not a good day for them, they won't do it. So it would be Monday through Saturday. And have you looked at any research or uh, uh, standards or event planning or anything with respect to how frequently uh, porta potties should be cleaned depending on usage? Yes, and actually, uh, Mr. Cheney and, and Grebnik looked at that, and I don't have those figures right in front of me, but I think Mr. Cheney does, and indicated that the number of porta johns that we have currently up there uh, meet and exceed based upon the numbers what would be required. I'm asking you about the cleaning because I've spent about an hour on the internet researching porta potty cleanliness. It was quite fascinating. <laughs> and, um, and it talked about, uh, and which kind of makes sense, it talked about the frequency of cleaning depends on uh, the number of people using per hour. Mm -hmm. So did you, I understand your answer to mean that you did not rely on any of that research. You just decided to double uh, from three to six times a week uh, and see how that goes. Do I get that right? Uh, not exactly. Uh, it was input that we received from Mr. Cheney that uh, research he did, and we took it at face value that the doubling would actually be more than enough. Um, the doubling of the free uh, of the cleaning or the doubling of the porta potties. Of the cleaning, yeah, and it, we've got plenty of porta johns. I mean, there's six up there, and based upon the numbers that we've got, even on the you know highest use days. That was, and Roy, correct me if I'm wrong on this, is plenty, uh, actually more than enough than what would be needed. Okay. Oh, Roy has his hand up. Mr. Cheney, if you'd respond to that, please. Yeah, so the, uh, the only uh, research we did was on actual, the number of porta potties and based on the chart from the porta potty uh, company, uh, it was around six, I think six to eight porta potties so it does technically fall into that category. Uh, on the cleanliness, uh, we did not have any charts. So basically, uh, we wanted more cleaning of the porta potties, and the max Colorado Springs would do would be six times a, a week. Thank you. So there was no other uh, any research that we did or could find on that. With that, basically, the cost would, my understanding, would be prohibited uh, and be to six times a week and they wouldn't do it on Sunday. So okay. I don't recall any other discussion there. Okay, thank you. And I see Councillor Chandler has had her hand up for a bit. Councillor Chandler? Uh, at the May 26th meeting, I specifically asked how much it costs to rescue someone from the incline. And the information I got from Dole Grebnik was 
approximately $800 per rescue. In 2019, we uh, rescued, we, we initiated 60 rescues uh, at a cost of uh, 60 times, it's $48,000, and that is not including the cost of taking the rescue personnel out of Manitou that we desperately need to serve our city. It typically it's three responders will go up to any rescue. So I hope that addresses uh, one of uh, Julie Wolf's questions. Uh, so $48,000 as of 2019 for rescue. Uh, Councillor Wolf. Um, and this is maybe like the million dollar question, but can you help me understand why it's so important to Colorado Springs to be in charge of the reservation rather than allowing Manitou to do that? It's my understanding that you folks uh, really want to be in charge and you don't want us to be in charge. And I have to, uh, I can't, I need help understanding uh, where you're coming from uh, about why that's important to you folks. Councilor Wolf, this is uh, Karen Pellis. Yes, um, as an owner, it would be our responsibility for that. Um, when we originally entered into agreements, and again, this is way off COVID, I, that's why we're here. Um, but uh, when we originally entered into that, we were not the owners. It was a privately held property and a Forest Service property and a Colorado Springs Utilities property. And back in 16, we um, worked through um, an exchange and we acquired that property along with the bar trail property. And so as the owner, it makes sense that we're responsible for that. Um, we, you wouldn't want us to be responsible for your parking enterprise, right? So that's why. Well, that's I wouldn't why. want you to be responsible for the reservation either. Well, it's, we are the owner and that is our responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Great I have question. nothing further. I believe Mr. Bremner was next and then Mr. Shada. Mr. Bremner. So this is for Karen Orsh, Kurt. What are your plans for post-COVID for the reservation system? Well, as I mentioned earlier, um, our board and uh, many of others in the community would, um, if we're going to do anything beyond COVID as it relates to the reservation system, that uh, we would go through a public process. And that's typically how we handle any of those major changes like that. Uh, the Forest Service was willing to support this because of the COVID-19. And uh, so therefore, if we were to continue on with any type of reservation system, we'd need to go through that public process. Mr. Bremner. So I guess, I'm not sure you answered my question. What? Are your plans to continue the reservation system after public process? I wouldn't know until we went through the public process. If it's effective and it's a good tool and it works and the community is supportive, we could absolutely consider that. But uh, again, clearly from our board, um, they want to make sure that there's a process involved in that. But we're very comfortable with it being as part of COVID. Okay. Mr. Bremner, I think you have a follow-on question to that. So what are your intentions for the, for the reservation process? I'm not sure I understand. Assuming we go through a public process and it's approved and so on and so forth, are your intentions to continue the reservation process after COVID? It depends on what the public process uh, dictates. We okay, I said, assuming we go through the process and it is approved, are your intentions to then continue the reservation process? If that comes out of the public process, absolutely. Why wouldn't we? That's what we do. We take input, we uh, move forward with our plans and work through with the community. And we'd want the community support for that effort. That would be critical. And I think you're hearing that already from the community in terms of um, the original proposal and then moving forward with the reservation system that's free right at this point until we go through a a bigger process down the road. Um, but I think we're already seeing some good support from the community around this and understanding um, that it's related to COVID and how that um, is important to make sure that uh, Manitou residents uh, uh, stay safe and healthy and that we um, provide the um, best experience in terms of uh, the conditions that we're currently in. 
I believe Mr. Shada was next, and then we'll do Councillor Chandler. Mr. Shada? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I think it is, uh, uh, I guess I'm asking this question of the owners. Um, how many parking places do you folks provide for the clients of the incline? As a city, um, the city of Colorado Springs owns the bar uh, lot. That is 40 spaces up there. And so currently city of Manitou um, has the lease agreement and um, you all have the operational responsibilities around that currently under that uh, lease agreement. And those uh, funds that are raised from that are to go towards uh, Manitou incline improvements, bar trail improvements, and uh, to help with congestion along Ruxton, which is why the uh, shuttle has been able to be supported by some of those funds as well. But the city of Colorado Springs only parking lot we have is the um, bar trail lot. Okay, so how many parking spaces are there? There's 40, if I'm correct. Kurt, is that right? I think it's right at 40. Right around 40, 37, 40, somewhere in there. Okay, so there are 40 parking spaces there. And what would you estimate um, is how many incliners arrive per car? It varies, and we have a lot of folks that walk up, uh, and we've had the great success from the shuttle over the last several years. Uh, okay, no, 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 I'm, I, I'd like to be specific about, you're telling me that you own a parking lot that has 40 spaces, and generally when you go through some kind of a conditional use, all right, um, planning departments usually attribute some kind of factor of how many people are arriving in the car, and then our clients of the of the attraction. So, what would you what would you say would be a fair number? We usually use about two point three. Kurt, is that what we've been using for the uh, Garden of the Gods? About two point three um, per vehicle. Okay, so let's just round it up to be two people for just easy math. So that's essentially the parking lot can accommodate 80 clients of the incline. Um, how long would you say it normally takes from your studies and your analysis of your property, uh, people who would park their car in that 40 car spot, utilize the incline, come back down, and then remove their car and make it available for somebody else? I would um, refer you to our parking enterprise folks. They do all that data and collect all that information. Okay. Well, I, I guess I would, as a, as a resident of Manatee Springs, I guess I would um, say that it's probably normally, for probably most people, something about two hours, you know, maybe three, if you include kind of putting your shoes on and oh, filling up your water okay. bottle and things like that, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't realize, I didn't think you were talking about the user themselves, but yes. Okay, so a rough turnover rate in that parking lot is about, what, four times a day? Yeah, so maybe right around there, maybe three to four. Okay, so um, let's say four times a day times 80 people, that's what, 240 people? Did you say four times, John? Well, I said. Uh, uh, my head. <laughs> well, she, I think we kind of computed that there were 80 people, and then the turnover rate in the parking lot was four times a day. Is that not correct? So that's about, I'm sorry, that's about 320 people, right? right okay, I'm sorry, follow. Yep. So I would say a fair calculation for the capacity of this of this attraction would be 320 people a day, okay? Um, I think that's an unfair burden to put on our community of 200 and some thousand dollars for a shuttle, okay? Um, and so I, I think that's essentially the capacity, and it would be my expectation that any reservation system would limit essentially the reservations to the incline to 320 people a day. That's essentially the parking allotment that UV owners are providing. Is that not true? Yes, if we were to take back the parking lot from the lease agreement that's currently with the city of Manitou Springs and um, with our uh, Colorado Springs utilities, then that would be the only parking lot that's attributed to that area, correct? 
However, when we entered into a master and management plan with you all, there was all um, considered all the parking in terms of downtown Manitou. That was your responsibility in terms of coming up with your parking management. That was really Manitou's piece of it uh, way back when. And again, I think we're getting way off on the COVID. No, no, no. We're not getting way off on it at all. No, we're not. Okay, Karen, I wrote the emergency order, okay? And the emergency order clearly, okay, says that the Manitou incline is a nuisance. You are not providing adequate parking, okay? And I want to go on the record, okay, that you're the owners of the incline have only provided three, have a capacity per day of 320 people. And the burden has been placed in our community for over $200,000 of transportation, okay? And no contribution, none, zero for any other parking places. So we're talking about post-COVID, um, Karen. Correct, and that's a very different story and I'm happy to have that conversation. Well, I'll put it this way. The, the conversation I think that this council needs to seriously consider is that we should be giving you 30 days notice that we have a dispute with this intergovernmental agreement. Okay? This is an undue burden to our community of $200,000 in difficult economic times. And you are suggesting, you have just suggested that the parking in our downtown area, okay, which is primarily for our businesses, okay, should be utilized for your property. No, sir, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what was entered into between the city. Okay, and this is what I'm, this is what I'm suggesting, is that I am unhappy with that intergovernmental agreement, okay? I am very unhappy with that. That is not a burden. This project of the incline has become a burden to our community. It is a financial burden to our community. It is a parking burden to our community. Okay, it is a congestion burden to our community, all right? And you are not contributing to the cost of a parking space other than what we just calculated was 320 people a day. And I am perfectly willing to allow the, the incline to reopen with the conditions of a, um, with a um, uh, reservation system that is limited to 320 people. I just wanted to go on record with that. Thank you, Mr. Shada. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Chandler? You're muted, Judith. I want to make sure that we're on the same page. I've heard a couple people say trail. I've heard a couple people say attraction. I want to make sure that moving forward, we are all very clear that the Manitou Incline is not a trail. It is not a trail, it's never been a trail, and it is a tr has been an attraction since day one, since a train was on it. So having said that, um, since we're focusing on COVID tonight, uh, that, which was, I, I didn't know that because I only got my packet an hour and 15 minutes before this meeting, I just wanna let you know that as of the 4th of June, Colorado, the state of Colorado has seen a 5% increase in COVID cases. We've had in since the fourth 1,287 new cases. Uh, this pandemic is by no means <laughs> controlled. It will not be controlled. It's going to go through several phases. And I don't know if any of you listened to NPR, but there was a renowned uh, uh, researcher who said, we must always be wearing masks. Masks do it. Please go to NPR and listen to this. So, you know, you're suggesting masks for the way down because, you know, it'd be kind of cool on Bar Trail. And my job is to keep the sit residents of Manitou safe, 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 safe. And that includes protecting them from the exhaust from the cars that come up to look for a parking spot on Bar, at Bar uh, parking lot. And so um, we, we, we have a lot to talk about. But first of all, the incline is an attraction, not a trail. And um, I, I fully support uh, Councillor Shada's uh, look at um, 
who bears the brunt of the cost of the incline being open. It is not Colorado Springs. And I will say that um, we are co-owners. We're co-owners of the incline uh, because we own the entrance. So co-owners. And so as co-owners, we have to come up with a really good plan that also benefits Manitou as well as Colorado Springs. That's it. Uh, Councillor Chandler, if it's okay, Mayor Graham, for me to ask a question, a follow-up question. Which yeah, part of the entrance are you talking about? Are you talking about the um, the roadways? And are you talking about the city itself, or are you talking about a particular parcel? I just want to be clear. Uh, you know, I'm talking about that you cannot get on the incline without going through Manitou and Correct. parking in, and you can you have to park in Manitou Correct. and as as a city council person i'm sure that wherever you live if you had a new attraction that attracted 500 cars a day chugging exhaust up and you happen to live in a canyon and you had say asthma you might have some issues with that and those are the issues that council deals with every day so i i'm, I'm i know that we're talking about this under the veil of covid but I want to remove the veil of COVID and actually talk about long-term management of the incline because uh, I, the, the COVID pandemic has given us a unique opportunity to manage this, but is, it, it is, this is not the, re, the sole reason why we're at the table here today. Well, that is the reason in terms of, well, we're here because of the emergency declaration, but I'm happy to have further dialogue and conversations um, with you all moving forward beyond COVID as well. That's, you know, we're, we're happy to do that. Um, but in terms of the closure, um, that's why we're, that's why we're here. And that's why what it's, the intention was to be here this evening as a special workshop. Mr. Shady, you had a question or a comment? It's going to be my suggestion that this thing remain closed indefinitely because I do not see a seriousness out of the city of Colorado Springs to deal with its parking issues and with the impact on our community. Thank you. I hear all this process stuff, okay? And your process, all right? It is our community that this attraction is in, and it is a nuisance. Okay. With regard to the, the fact that uh, as, as this was presented tonight as a, to, to address matters during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, this was presented clearly as a, an interim solution in the idea that a significant public process would be involved if, if this was to move into a longer term, you know, a sustainable solution. I guess my question is one of the, one of the points that the Manchester Spring City staff made in their May 26th uh, presentation was that uh, uh, that, that, the, that the city of Man Springs, uh, Colorado Springs, and the Forest Service should, you know, immediately move towards um, towards that long-term process to look at what needed to be done. I believe the a NEPA uh, issue comes up here, and uh, Manitou had requested. Uh, our position is that we need to get on that immediately. My understanding is that Colorado Springs has uh, different thoughts. So I guess uh, Karen, if you could address that. Yeah, that'll have to, Mayor Graham, excuse me, um, that will have to be addressed by the Forest Service. They manage the NEPA process. That's not my process, but I do know that's a necessary requirement. As you look at the master and management plan from before, all of that was a pretty hefty um, lift in terms of bringing all of that work together. And I believe Council, uh, excuse me, Mayor Pro Tem Fortune uh, was involved and can recall how, uh, what a significant effort uh, that was to put that plan in place. And so I would defer to Oscar on his timing for a NEPA process. Anything that should be involved, any funding uh, from the City of Colorado Springs in terms of the planning and master planning efforts and such. Uh, would, did, would need to be placed in the queue and considered and, and gone through our public um, boards and our city council and mayor um, for uh, that to move forward. Okay. So when Manitou says that we need to get on this immediately, it, it sounds like uh, the Car Springs take is that uh, it'll move much, much more slowly. Um, 
And while Manitou is, is interested in uh, trying to comply with the Forest Service and those regulations, I, I don't see that Colorado Springs is necessarily quite as uh, energetic in that regard. It's uh, just, there... I'm sorry, Mayor, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no you go ahead. I thought you took a breath, I apologize. <laughs> um, Mayor Graham, no, in terms of the processes and stuff, again, I, I don't control the NEPA scenario that is a Forest Service um, requirement, um, but in terms of budgeting for a master management plan, is that something uh, the city of Manitou Springs has funding available for that? My understanding from Denise, there wasn't funding uh, for that. Well, I think we're just beginning to look at that now. So uh, that is, I believe, believe correct that there isn't funding for that now. We don't know what it would cost. And I'm not sure that we know what all would be involved. Um, right. Since you have some experience at it, I was, was actually kind of hoping you could provide a little more, more uh, guidance. Yeah, we um, did. I did reach out earlier today to the same consultant that um, the communities used the first go around. And I wasn't here for that for first go around. I've just read all the all the documents and seen all the work that everybody did to um, put those uh, documents and plans in place. Um, but it was, I believe it was over $120,000 for that um, master and management plan originally. Um, and then I do, don't have the details on what the NEPA process would cost that at this time we'd have to defer to Oscar um, to understand what's involved in that process. Do you, do you have a sense of how long that might take? What would be a typical time? Um, normally to go, <laughs> I must say normally, I don't know that there's really a normal uh, scenario. It just really varies um, in terms of the community and the community involvement. Um, a good example is we um, have done NEPA processes um, for uh, the uh, Pikes Peak um, Summit House. And that was a pretty lengthy process and we already had one on the books, but it took uh, almost four years to put all, all and everything into place. Um, we've done one recently as it relates to uh, Gold Camp uh, Road and uh, being able to close uh, those gates and that was about a two year process. So it really depends on the community, how supportive the community is and how um, how much there's consensus and collaboration around the effort going forward. A very divided process is very difficult, extremely difficult. And I think some of your staff, I believe Denise had mentioned she's gone through that NEPA process um, before and understands what's, it, what's involved and how extensive that is. But, you know, it's what, something we could sit down with Oscar and find out uh, the timing of that. The federal government has to line up their, their time and their capacity within their staff. Um, but I, I defer that to Oscar to understand that better. But in terms of Colorado Springs right now, um, for us to be able to put anything forward, we're probably yep. at the end of 2021, 2022, uh, based on the current uh, workload in terms of doing a whole master management plan. We've just finished two. We just had two successful ones approved today by our parks board, and they were um, right around that 18 uh, month uh, time period. So it really depends on the community and how uh, much consensus there is around a particular direction. And I think that's gonna be key with this is there was so much work that went into it originally. And uh, hopefully we can um, move past some of that because there's a lot of uh, parts and pieces that have already been completed, right? In terms of um, when we first started this, um, we've done $6 million worth of improvements to the facility to get it into the best condition it's ever been in. And I think that's been an extremely um, big check mark in terms of the, the current master management plan. I know you all have done a lot of work along Ruxton, um, which was part of that original plan as well. And so um, depending on what's all involved and what's uh, required to uh, converse with the community on and get their input on will depend on how long it actually takes. So there's no great science to it. Unfortunately, it just depends on the consensus amongst the community as you move forward with those dialogues. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Councillor Shade and Councillor Bremer had their hands up about the same time. Um, Mayor Graham, Shade. I think I have my answers question. My, my, my questions answered. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bremner? So this NEPA process is because of the National Forest portion of the incline, is that correct? Correct. 
And, and the that portion is only the very top portion of the incline. It's the very, very last portion of the incline. Is that correct? Yes. So to my thinking, it's not going to be a very involved, long, drawn out process for just the top portion of the incline because the incline is there. I mean, there's really nothing environmental to protect up there. It would, to, my, to my thinking, it would just be a simple process to say, okay, here's what we have to do, get it done, whatever it costs, $10,000. I don't know how much it's gonna cost, but it's not gonna be significant. It's not gonna be long and drawn out, take a very long time. Mayor Graham, is it okay for me to approach Councillor okay, Bremer? Um, yeah, Karen, go, go ahead and, and speak to that, Karen, right. if you would. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bremer. And, uh, and I was remiss. Uh, you were part of that original plan as the original friends, uh, Incline Friends uh, president and uh, know what that heavy lift was like before as well. And uh, again, what um, the process that's been discussed in terms of NEPA and the things required, we also um, intend on doing the Northern Trail as part of that. And so that process is part of that conversation and um, the studies that are required around that, as well as I believe the Forest Service has interest in evaluating bar trail and some of the um, issues and concerns around that. And so the goal would be to do that once with the community, you know, not only to um, put uh, reservation plans and um, additional uh, trail connections and um, reevaluate events and facilities along um, Bar Trail. That would go all as one package in one time going out to the community so that we could all save a whole lot of uh, funds and time and energy and um, be able to do that collectively and in concert together. Okay, uh, Mr. Schroeder. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. To the best of my understanding, this is something we're going to have to chase down and, and better understand. But because the trail is on po a portion of uh, part of it's on Forest Service land, it's a continual trail. So the requirement typically from the Forest Service is you have to study the entire area because they look at it, even though it's not on property that's theirs, it's a continual connection that crosses over some additional property. And because we're touching Forest Service land, uh, they require something more extensive than what it does make sense uh, what Mr. Bremner said. Hey, it's only the top third of the incline. No, uh, based upon the direction or the, the guidelines that Far Service has, you have to cover the entire trail section because they look at it as a linked continual stretch. But that's something we're going to have to uh, verify. Thank okay, you. If, you, if you would, please, yeah. Councilman, uh, Council Chandler, did you have your hand up or was your question been answered? Um, my question hasn't been answered, but I will reserve it for executive session. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other comments or questions from council members? Okay, very good. Well, I think that was the, the point of tonight's exercise. So, uh, Karen and Kurt, appreciate your attendance very much. I think this information was helpful. Um, we will probably, I, I would and not be surprised if we had some follow-on questions. Um, so we, we do appreciate your, your participation. Uh, council, uh, as, as uh, Mayor Pro Tem Fortune had suggested, um, she will be sending some questions uh, via email to, to Roy, I think, to, to um, divvy those out. I, I think any of us could uh, do the same. I'm sure Mr. Cheney would be happy to uh, handle those. Okay. If, um, if there's no other business, then I think we could, uh, we could conclude with this item. Any last comments from council? One last yeah. comment. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, set an executive session as soon as possible to discuss the incline issues. Okay. Um, Councillor Wolf. You're, you're muted. I'd like to propose that we put this on the agenda for the next work session. I am not willing to do it on a Saturday or any other day. I do not see it as an emergency. I do not agree to go into the building and I'm happy 
to do this during work session, we could start right at 6 p.m. Okay, but this, this course would be an executive session. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, but you would you say move it to a work session, uh, to a time reserved for a work session. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Fortune. I would like to propose that if at all possible, and if we're allowed to do this in a work session or in an executive session, that we do it no later than Tuesday night. And I would like that because Jeff will be in attendance and I think we need our city attorney to be present. It's a good point, seems to me. And I would also like as many people as possible to do it. And I understand that people are uncomfortable coming into city hall, but um, I would feel very comfortable in, in uh, coming into city hall with proper social distancing and, and precautions uh, implemented for it. Okay. Councillor Wolf. And I would like to propose that N N uh, Nancy Fortune is not uh, the boss and sure. she is not going to decide if we don't want to come, you don't but, have to come. And, and the it, question is, we all have the legal right to participate and we will all be given the legal right to participate regardless I, of where it will be. I just want to say, Julie, that I was not di directing anything. I was, I was providing my input as one of seven. I think we can come in to those of us who want can come into City Hall. The rest, if people are uncomfortable coming into City Hall, they can Zoom. So I, I'm not, I, if you are perceiving that I'm being the boss, I am not being, I clearly understand I am one of seven. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, thank you. Councilor Chandler. Uh, just point of clarification. So am I hearing everyone saying that uh, the next work session will be exclusively an executive session starting at six? Did I hear that? Or, or uh, I was proposing an executive session after next Tuesday, uh, since Jeff will be there. Okay. That's so late. It's... That's gonna be a very late night. Yeah. The reason I thought it might be helpful to do it at a work session is we can start right up at 6 p.m. If we're gonna have this start at 9 p.m. It, it would be tricky. Yeah. We all better drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. I would rather it be in a work session so that we can start right at six because we already have an agenda for Tuesday, I would imagine. If we can scrap the agenda on Tuesday and it's nothing urgent, I'd be all in favor of it. I'm not in favor of starting executive session with our city attorney who has to drive all the way back, you know, up to Denver, Boulder, uh, you know, at midnight. I'm not, I'm, I don't see this as an emergency. I don't want to stay up until 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night to do this. I would rather it be right at 6 p.m. And if we can't do that next Tuesday because it's a meeting, then I propose we do it at the following Tuesday at a work session. Okay. Um, well, let me ask this then. Suppose we looked at doing it Monday night start at six o'clock had an executive I opposed session. to doing it anything other than tuesday night because we already have plenty of two things to do this is not an emergency I, this is karen's emergency but it's not my emergency and okay. there's no reason we can't do this on a tuesday night you personally said that people who are employed should be encouraged to join city council I am full-time employed and I have joined city council and you keep scheduling these meetings. I object. This is not an emergency. This should be on a Tuesday night. This is the only meeting we've had that was not, a, has not been on a Tuesday night. And we've been trying to get this, this matter resolved, make some progress on it. Councillor Chandler. Many of our liaison commitments happen to be on Monday nights, starting at 6 PM. So, I would just throw that out as an idea. I'm not opposed to meeting at another time that's convenient. However, I do, I do really echo Councillor Wolf's um, um, concerns about um, leaving this till the very end. Um, I think this um, is an incredibly important issue. I, do, I believe that it deserves a work session. I believe that we should commit a work session to it. There's lots of moving parts here, lots of issues. I have a number of issues just on, say, the press release, uh, those kinds of things. I want some answers. And I think that those are best served in an executive session. And um, I do believe that um, a nice fresh start at six o'clock on a work session evening uh, would, be, would be great, um, but I am not, totally opposed to that being on an evening other than Tuesday. Okay. 
if it were possible to basically take take the agenda items for next Tuesday and move them out to a future meeting, would council entertain the idea of discussing this next Tuesday at six o'clock? It'd be an executive session. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. I, okay. Can, can, can I just, I mean, and obviously we're not taking formal action tonight, but I would like to get a kind of read the temperature. Okay. So, so the, the thought would be to discuss this next Tuesday uh, in executive session starting at six o'clock. Oh, Who but may I ask a clarification question before we weigh yeah, in? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, are you suggesting that we're in executive session, let's say from six to nine, and then we begin the meeting at nine? Or are no, you I'm suggesting that that'll be the only agenda? I, what what, I, what I'm suggesting is if we could move the other agenda items off to another week, that we devote the entire evening to the the, the incline and this management plan, and 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 hopefully, if we start at six. My, my thought is if we gave it three hours and, 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 and hit it hard, I think that's about as far as, it, you know, my, my idea is that our, we're productive for about three hours. I don't know if we get it done. Uh, uh, yeah, I would hope we would get it advanced uh, pre pretty far next Tuesday. That would be my thought if we did that. So d does that kind of clarify the situation? Yes, thank you very much. I, I okay. understand now. Okay, and then let me, let me real quickly, I'm gonna ask Denise for, a, Quick, or quick thought. Um, you're more familiar with the agenda for next Tuesday than I am. I apologize for not knowing that. Denise, is there anything really critical next Tuesday that you can recall? I'm looking at it. There's a couple of appointments. Um, there's the moratorium for short-term rental. Um, a resolution for for um, bike month and. The historical and then um, hours of, of operation for medical medical marijuana. So okay. you can probably get most of the work done if fairly quickly, I would guess, except for the. Um, so yeah, those are the items. Well, okay. can I interject as well because we do have a hearing that's scheduled, so that means it was published. Um, and that was for the um, vacation rentals. And then we also have some items on the consented, consent calendar that probably have some uh, timeliness to them, but we could, I mean, that's a consent agenda. So if it just gets approved, you know, five minutes, that's pretty reasonable. Okay, council, council conceivably then, I mean, if we tried to get those several items taken care of in a half an hour, and then move into executive session as quickly as possible, 6, 6.30. Does that seem reasonable? Um, okay, I guess if, yes. if, if that seems, okay. Let's just uh, raise your hand if that seems like it, it would be a reasonable approach. Councilor Chen, okay. And of course, Councilor Wolbrook is uh, driving, so. That's okay, okay. I'm, a, I'm okay with that, John, thank you. You're, you're okay with that, okay. So so the, the plan then would be that we would, we would meet at six o'clock, we would try to, we would have a much abbreviated agenda from what we, we have right at the moment. So we try to take care of just a few things, get it done in half an hour. We do have that hearing. Um, the resolution won't take long. I mean, it's a, it's a bicycle month resolution. There's no controversy there. And then we could move in as quickly as possible into executive session. And that would give us most of the evening. Um, I think that would allow us to get to this quickly. I think there's strong interest in doing that. So if that's agreeable to the council, I would, uh, I think that's the action we should take. Okay, I see nods and in, in, uh, in approval out there. So that will be our course of action. Okay, um, do we have anything else related to this that anyone wants to bring up? Okay, Councilor Wolf. I just want to thank Karen and Kurt for coming tonight. I know we don't agree on a lot of things, but I do appreciate your professionalism and your willingness to come speak with us and your clarity and well-organized presentations. And I also appreciate that you got your packet to us 48 hours in advance. So thank you both very much. I mean, we didn't get it 48 hours in advance, but somebody in Manitou apparently did. But anyway, so thank you both. Well, I just, if, Mayor Graham, if it's acceptable, could I just say thank you again to 
um, to the council for the opportunity to this evening. I look forward to answering any follow-up questions that you have and thank you for for your time and uh, feedback and um, if there's anything else that you need from uh, myself don't hesitate to reach out uh, Roy and Denise and, and they'll have uh, our contact information and I'd be happy to um, talk with you individually if that makes sense as well so thank you very much and I appreciate your comments thank you thank you very much we appreciate your your time and, and assistance thank you both Karen and Kurt okay thank you mayor thank you um, so technically, as we have with every meeting, whether it's a regular meeting or a work session, uh, we can discuss council correspondence if anyone has anything in the last two days. You want to bring anything up? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Fortune? Um, yeah, and as with everything, I do try to share what I've been doing. And so this is my opportunity, my easiest opportunity to do that. First of all, I took up um, Chief's, uh, uh, Chief Churchill's invitation to go and visit with the police today. I sat in on some of their training. It, uh, I really enjoyed it and took a few minutes to just speak to them. Um, and that was a good experience. Secondly, I have received several um, concerns from community members and I've been remiss at not bringing this up previously, but um, looking for council statement on the current um, uh, conditions in our country when it comes to um, the protests and so on. And I would certainly like for us to come up with a statement or something. And I don't know if someone on council might like to come up with something that we could all agree to. Um, but I, I personally, th that if we could come up, if we as a council could speak with one voice and give some leadership to the community, I think that would be very appropriate, so I throw that out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I see a, a, a thumbs up, and I've seen a couple of nods of the head, so I think uh, it seems like the, the majority sentiment here is in favor of that. Um, so the question is, how do we do it? Because I think sooner rather than later is uh, kind of important. I, I think that this is season. I really yeah. think this is like a future agenda item. I think it requires a process and the process is a, a deliberation. So I would like to recommend that if we're going to take on something like this, we do it by adding it to an agenda so that we can have full public process and we can deliberate. I agree. Does someone, does someone on council want to come up with a draft that we could deliberate over? I, I could take a cut at it. Um, I'll, I'll volunteer to do a, to a first draft, uh, unless, unless I'm breaking somebody's heart. I, I didn't see any hands go up there. <laughs> you might be breaking uh, I can work with you on that. I, I'm happy to help you with that. Okay. Um, all righty. Okay. So, um, so be it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Councilor Chandler? Um, I just want to tell everybody that um, I had three and a half hours of an orthopedic uh, appointment today and I, I really want to jump in full full bore and do everything I can but my doctor has uh, put me on some restrictions and that's why I'm not jumping in and volunteering for all this stuff so just please let me just put, bear with me for whatever how many times uh, they said it could be takes up to six months for my foot to heal and if not surgery is in, indicated so I just want to let you know that I'm not I'm not um, volunteering for these not not volunteering for these things because I don't want to uh, I just I have to some other issues I have to take care of um, that said um, I had an awesome lunch with uh, police uh, chief Brian Churchill and two uh, mental health counselors from Aspen Point which we are very highly motivated about setting up a emergency mental health response team for our vulnerable population in Manitou with the idea that ultimately at some time down the road, we might even have a brick and mortar office where we can refer clients to uh, get mental health services. But right now it looks like we're moving forward with that. And I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Chief Churchill on that. Thank you so much. This is so needed in the community. And also I would like to say that um, 
we will be talking about the quarry issue at the next OSAC meeting. So I will be bringing all of that information to you at the next um, available meeting when we have our next OSAC meeting. That's it. Great. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, anybody else? Okay, there being uh, uh, Counselor Wilbrooks, since you're uh, um, online, did you have anything you wanted to add for Council Correspondence? Thank you, Mayor, but no, I do not. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, all right, let's move on and see if we have anything for uh, under the uh, city administrator's reports. Mr. Cheney? Yeah, I just want to make a statement that the uh, Colorado Springs final PowerPoint was set, sent at 1.56 p.m. today, which is four hours and not 16 hours ago. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah. Very good. Good point. Um, yeah, I, I should probably add, too, that I uh, you know Mr. Cheney had a meeting scheduled with uh, Karen earlier in the day to, to go over slides. I think that was first thing in the morning. So, um, yeah, that was uh, that, that needs to be recognized. Good point. Uh, Councillor Wolf, did you have a comment? Uh, my comment is, um, and I guess it's more of a recommendation because I know we're not voting and making motions or anything this evening, I assume. Um, but I, I would like to make a recommendation that staff refrain from any further conversations with Colorado Springs regarding the topic that was presented tonight until we all have an opportunity to coalesce and discuss and share ideas next Tuesday, which is just a few days away uh, during our executive session. I think that would possibly avoid some problems even if no one intends to cause them. And I think we've made it clear tonight that we intend to deliberate seriously about all of this stuff and we're, but I, I don't want uh, to confuse things by having further press releases, emails, phone calls, meetings, Zooms, any of that. Uh, it's just my personal suggestion. I know I'm not allowed to direct staff. Well, and I, and I think that we would anticipate that some of us may have uh, questions that would email to, to Mr. Cheney and he might, in order to get the answer, have to contact, you know, uh, either Karen or Kurt. So that would, that would well, be an issue. Would, would that, in the context of that, would, would you be okay with that, Councilor Wolf? I don't think there's any problem with me. For me, if someone just has a, a question like, what do you mean by this or, or what have you, but in terms of proposals, uh, settlement proposals, legal contract modifications, uh, opinions, I think all of that should wait until we can deliberate together before it's presented. But if the question is something, you know, uh, like, uh, what's the width of your parking lot? Uh, or uh, show us more information, if you would, about blah, blah, that you presented. But I don't think it's appropriate for us to be taking any positions or suggestions or recommendations until we're on the same page together okay. as a group. Okay. And I would apply that to staff. Okay, um, and I noticed Councillor or Mayor Pro Tem Fortune had her hand up. I think probably on. Yeah, the no, you answered my question. My concern was I had withheld my questions to from the briefing tonight because I, but I probably got twenty questions that I want to ask, and I, based on what I just heard, I will send them to Roy, and he can send them to Collar Springs, whatever. Um, I would like to hear staffs uh, if if we are putting. No, I can I can go along with not having a lot of extra discussion other than get our questions answered. Okay. Does that, does that seem reasonable? Okay. All right. Um, really just a three day moratorium if you don't count the weekend. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Chandler. You're, you're muted. Judith, you're muted. Okay, now, well, we seem to have lost her. Um, oh, no. Uh, oh. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, it happens to me once a minute. Um, so I have a number of questions and concerns about th uh, the, um, what has transpired since May 26th that 
may not be in the purview of Roy Cheney. I mean, there's, I have several questions, including the um, presentation that he, they weren't available to. So I'd like to know who um, I send those questions to. They're, they're, they're procedural questions. And um, perhaps, Mayor, would you want us to send those to you or um, I, I had I just have some some real concerns and yeah. so, so some of them revolve mm -hmm. around um, how, when when we got the packet how late we got the packet the press release that I I don't know about you but I was no part of um, and uh, some communication disconnects so I have lots of questions but I don't know who to field them all to well if, if you would like if you want to send them to me I will uh... Uh, I'll certainly take a look at them. We'll see how we can get them okay. answered or, you know, it, it, it may be that uh, that this is a lesson learned and we want to do things differently in the future. Uh, I mean, that that's just my shooting from the hip. But yeah, if you want to send those to me, that I'll take a look Thank, at them. Thank I, you, Mayor. I appreciate that. My, my pleasure. Uh, Mr. Cheney, did, I, I, I think you were finished. Is there anything else? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. And thank you. I know you really worked hard on this, uh, so I appreciate your efforts there. Um, Denise, Thank you. Denise, did you? Denise, okay, you didn't have any. Um, okay, Councilor Wolf, I see you got your hand up. Yes, may I ask um, if you, Mayor, would be um, willing to share any emails that you get from any of us council members? Uh, unless um, I don't know if that's a violation of the open meeting law, um, yeah. but I would very much like to know what the questions are and what the answers are. Uh, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes well, if I can just read someone else's yeah. questions, it just triggers another good idea, thought for me. Yeah. And so it really helps me. I'm a, lear a group learner that way, yeah. but I don't know if that would be problematic. I would guess the questions can be sent to all of us. I don't know if the answers, uh, can be sent to all of us or not? Do, uh, do you have any insight on that since Jeff's not with us tonight? Um, let me make one quick comment. Um, I, and and I, will, I will defer to uh, the city clerk on this too, but I was thinking maybe if, uh, if there are answers, I could just print them out and bring them to the meeting next Tuesday and give everybody a copy at, at the same time. I, then I think we, would be, we wouldn't have to worry about violations of the, of the open meetings. Act. I'd appreciate that. Thank would, you. Would that, would that work? Uh, yeah, that would be helpful so I can learn from other people's questions and your answers. That would be great. Okay. Uh, Judy, Fair would that... That's advisable because that way everybody's hearing the answers at the same time. It's at, in public. At, at the same time. I just okay. thought that... Executive session. Right. Okay. Uh, Councilor Wilbrook? I just thought that if we shared questions without deliberating them, that that might be helpful. And I didn't think that violated the sunshine law. It's when you start to have discussions with three or more that, and you start going back and forth that you're in violation. But if you already see that one council member has asked 20 of your 25 questions, then it just seems like, I just, unless I'm wrong about that, and I believe Judy Morgan would be tonight's expert on that, um, it's hard to resist the re reply all or reply, but getting a list of questions and knowing what each other's questions are, if we're not deliberating them, in my reading of the law, is not a violation of the Sunshine Law. Okay. So, Judy, Ms. Susan. The challenge you would have is if there's some sort of a direction or like a implied um, decision or something where it's it's very clear that somebody's coming to a decision on something or kind of directing everyone to think a certain way um, that could be considered like deliberation or, or you just have to be careful that those, um, those actions are done in, a, in according to the law. So if it's when you're, if you're going into executive session to get legal, a legal opinion, um, th those are, you know, questions you ask and then, and then, as you know, the attorney gives you answers. Um, so I don't see where those, if there was a comment made about hearing those questions and answers in executive session and unless they're executive session topics with answers from your attorney, I think those questions and answers probably would be better um, discussed 
in open session unless it has to do with negotiation, that sort of thing. So there's, it has to qualify under the executive session to then have that conversation in executive session. So we awesome. have to think about all that. Good, Councilor Wolf. So Judy, thank you, Judy. So that would be like personnel issues, yeah. legal advice, those two things. Any or questions? Any of the questions going along, personnel concerns, legal advice concerns, that would move into the executive session. So there's seven things that, that it could fall under. So we would just need to make sure that we go ahead and um, create the agenda item to cover those items that will be potentially discussed in that executive session. So if it's personnel, if it's legal opinion, and if it's, um, like negotiations or something along those lines, we would need to agendize it such, and then that could be discussed in executive session. Councilor Wolf. So, so does that, do you need that information uh, in time for tomorrow's packet? I would need, yeah. Or agenda? I guess what we, what I'm asking then is, is can we assume that those are the, the areas that we want to make sure we cover when we do our agenda item wording? I would, I would suggest personnel and legal advice. I, I, those are the only uh, agenda items that I personally can imagine coming up. I just want to make sure we give proper notice uh, in your you know, agenda announcement and such. So I, I'd like to hear from other people, but those I'm trying to think broadly those are the only two issues I, I can think of is there may be some personnel issue questions. I believe there are. And um, also some questions for uh, legal questions pertaining to the incline. I think there are three, um, Judy, what I'm hearing is the, uh, the legal or the incline and negotiations, personnel, and then also incline enforcement and that would need to go under there. So we can ask Jeff for the verbiage of those three things. Okay, and when it comes to personnel issues, if it's about a specific person, not a generic um, umbrella, then you do have to, you know, there's notice notifications uh, requirements and things like that as well. So I guess, Mayor, if, if you have some insight tomorrow um, when we're, getting that agenda item set up. Um, I appreciate your feedback. And I would work with Jeff, so it's all done. Okay. okay. All right. I, I think we can make the world go forward, I hope. Okay. Um, and, and Denise, I believe you, you didn't have anything else. Is that correct, Denise? That's Denise? Correct. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've covered everything. Um, Unless there's anything else, I would uh, say that we should adjourn and call it a night. Thank you, Jeff. everyone. Good night. Thanks. This is uh, extra, extra duty, so I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Good night. Thanks.